Oh, it's time. Time to get radical. Your discretion is advised. Welcome to Radical Combat of the Week for November 1st through November 7th, 2021. These are the very best comments from that time period. Starting out with the three honorable mentions, we have Juliet Juliet India Mobile, Hooded Farmer, and Brutes McGee. The bronze medal comes to us from Shinra Returns. In the real world, I'm an advocate for animal rights. This tweet, as you say, Rick, is laughable. No one in the movement with any sense at all would take offense to the use of language regarding baseball. The most important debate that can arise from the concerns speciesism, it's an important concept in the AR movement. Basically, it points out the inherent hypocrisy of humans who eat one type of animal, pigs for instance, and who care for others, dogs for example. There's no real difference between a pig and a dog. Both are knowing, feeling conscious beings with lived experience. Yet both are valued in different ways by people. One is food, while the other is friend. There are historical reasons for this, but ultimately there's no real meaningful difference between both species. But we discriminate between them both based on their species, hence speciesism as a term. Note I don't use it myself. Hope that clears that up. Around the world, animals are valued differently based on culture, society, and history. A example is the taboo around the consumption of cattle in India, However, dogs are consumed in Southeast Asia routinely. So in conclusion, our relationships to animals are complex, contested, and socially constructed, and sometimes rather arbitrary. Yeah, the difference between a pig and a dog. I really started to think about it, and it brought me back to an upload from last year, I believe, where they tested the ability of a pig. Remember the pig that somehow played a video game? You know, that kind of proved that pigs do have intelligence. Now it's debatable back and forth between the intelligence of a pig and a dog, but if you look at both, I don't know, it's hard to say. It's hard to say if you really kind of think about it. I mean, society has meshed us to see like cats and dogs as friend, and then pigs and cows as food. I mean, I guess it's just luck of the draw. It's just how it works. I guess humans, we need something to eat. And decisions were made, decisions were made generations and generations ago that these are the things that you eat and this is the things that you befriend and you love. So I get that. The term speciesism, speciesism in that respect, you know, because I thought they just kind of made it up that it didn't have any, uh, have any actual origin. But... PETA used it in a different way, talking about bullpen and how it's, you know, speciesism on the bullpen. Meanwhile, the bulls and the cows, they don't care about that. You know, the cows specifically, they care about going, you know, to be uh, turned into hamburgers. Delicious, delicious hamburgers. Yes. Hmm. Now, it doesn't mean I'm not going to no longer eat hamburgers, but, you know, I get it. I understand it. It's all about the... The lottery, if you're lucky or not. I'm pretty lucky. I mean, you and me are pretty lucky, Shinra Returns. You know, we're humans. We do not get eaten. Unless there's a zombie outbreak or something like that. Or, you know, we, uh, you know, there's people that eat people, you know. Who are all these people that eat people? These people eat us. Thank you there, Shinra Returns. The silver medal comes to us from Red Strice 97. I said before, and I'll say it again, humor is different with different people. It's the very reason why I enjoy watching reruns of Big Bang Theory, but could never get into the office despite trying too many times. My wife and I are polar opposites on Napoleon Dynamite. I enjoy the humor, and she thought the movie was a complete waste of time. When you think about the setting of ND, rural Idaho, and the time period it came out in 2004, it easily adds to the experience and humor as well. When you have that setting in your head, little things like the Happy Hands Club and how the kids, even uh, even the adults, and even the adults in the movie behave overall, it all just makes sense and the end result is funny as all stereotypes are used to the fullest. All you need to know is just a little bit of rural America to enjoy this movie. I've also found this movie to be a ton of fun when you are watching it with friends as well as the ones that don't get certain things that can easily be helped out by others. 
one movie in particular that is hugely underrated, and I think it's because no one understood it, was John Carter. I really liked John Carter, but the reason was, was because I knew the history of the book, or a series of books. The first book was written in 1911. Many people did not know that when they saw this movie, so you have to put your mindset as a person living back then. Many people at that time really thought the planets of Mars and even Venus had living creatures on them, including humans. This is very much why Mars in this movie was the way it was. This is a sci-fi story written a very long time ago. I think if people just knew a little bit more about certain movies before watching them like John Carter, they would at least appreciate them more and maybe even like them. This post is long. I hope YouTube allows it. Well, YouTube did allow it, although there are many posts with certain words, many potential, you know, comment medalists that YouTube sadly does not allow right now. Uh, now, when it comes to Napoleon Dynamite, I don't use that as an indicator on really someone's humor ability because some people will find that funny, that like funny movies, and some people will not, you know, get any of the humor. Doesn't mean if you don't get the humor in Napoleon Dynamite, like it's a it's a masterpiece or something like that. But it's just there's many things I like about it. There's really no vulgarity in the movie. It seems like an old style type movie, but with some uh, new things. Seems like it was you know made in the 60s or 70s. I like the retro aspect of the movie, but then it's really like when there's something that is new that comes in, kind of like the gangsters or um you know pedro's cousins or whatever in the low rider it sticks out so much and it's a it's a different kind of comedy it is but i it's not for everybody you know but those cult classics that's why they're called cult classics because they're really not for everybody and with this other movie john carter i've never seen john carter but it's interesting to know the history you know behind that it is sometimes the build up and the history behind the movie you know, you look into it, you look at how it was made, or you look at how much money was put into it, or how much time and effort, and let's say it turns out really bad, you know, it doesn't mean that there wasn't a lot of people that put a lot of loving and crafting effort into the production of that. One more thing about Napoleon Dynamite is, it has a great soundtrack. That's a great soundtrack that fits that movie perfectly. Sometimes it's as simple as the soundtrack in a movie that kind of elevates it. Thank you, Red Strass 97. And now we have the shiny, shiny gold medal. It's actually not a comment, but a response to a comment, which is still a comment. Lassie Kinnowin 81. Well, he ordered the console itself. You were talking about uh, the guy. Who's the guy? The guy? Um, Pixel Man, the mad little pixel. He ordered the console itself for the same reason. I don't think it's a mask. But it's pretty much on the table. That's why he buys like 9% of the stuff he buys it and would silly be silly to buy even just 10% of the stuff he buys as a hobbyist, really. It's not a hobby for him anymore like that. Anyway, YouTubers buying that stuff just to show it off is absolutely true. Same with the Wicked Gamer. It's not like he plays the 100 plus Famicons. It's pretty obvious it's for collecting and to make a quick burner video. Anyhow, if he actually buys that stuff, that's way better than doing unbox therapy. Unbox therapy, way of only showing stuff that was sent free or paid to show. That's an actual problem you see. Finding a channel that would consistently procure stuff without them being all deals. There's also some YouTubers who will absolutely buy devices just to run emulation tests on them and make a video about that performance. And then it just goes to Cupbird. It's pretty obvious because what would they do with dozens of SBCs at this point anyway? MP's channel is just a quick look at hardware he buys to make a quick look video about the hardware pretty much. Rarely, but sometimes with a follow-up to test something on it. Like, come on the channels that buy everything. Does it even matter if they buy it as a hobby item to be review unit? It's not like they have 365 days in a year. Wait, well, you added a zero there. That's a lot of I, hey, that's a lot of days there. I mean, you're still the gold medalist there, but... You know, not that many days in the year there, Lassie. Let's kind of tighten that up in the future. To actually play everything. Actually moving to straight up buying review units with money out of pocket is commendable. Now, if MGR would admit to just making hidden gems vids for the sake of making hidden gem vids. 
But the truth is that you can make a YouTuber retro console in 2021 and sell a thousand units just for a thousand hopeful YouTubers. Maybe there would be a market for that. Just buy a thousand unit batches of, you know, customized Android boxes and sell them for people just to review. The reviewers being the end market. Like Soulja Boy put something quirky on the firmware for every version, a thousand times a hundred dollars, half profit, do it one time a year and live in Southeast Asia in comfort and spend a month customizing the firmware for every year. Maybe call them a duckling company, consoles or company, maybe even add bugs to the UI for the YouTubers to crap on. You know, like that life of a black panther game that made a ton of money because people, oh, okay, panther, panther game, that made a ton of money because people bought it just to crap on it knowing full well it was crap. To that last thing, interesting, interesting idea you have there. What if something is brought out and it's crapped on by a lot of YouTubers? But the idea from someone like Soulja Boy is if there's all these YouTubers talking about it, it might have the opposite effect. Like basically they're getting like free promotion. Hmm, that's interesting. I don't know if that's a really sound like uh, strategy or whatnot. Uh, and you mentioned... Southeast Asia, I think here, where they eat dogs, you know, so hmm. a <sighs> lot, lot I could talk about here. You bring up MGR, you know, just possibly wanting to admit for the channel that he does things just for the channel, that it's a business. It is not because he's actually passionate about talking about the hidden gems, but he needs to upload something for the channel. Maybe that's the case. Past a certain point, you know, he's got to upload something for the channel. In all honesty, maybe MGR really isn't even really that passionate about, you know, game collecting, but it's made him a fair bit of money on YouTube, so he needs to keep up the mask. Keep up the mask. You bring up the mask. And Art Bell is the person I think you responded to talking about, you know, the mask. And when a YouTuber is actually honest. And there was a moment from this person of honesty, because maybe he just didn't want to be roasted in the comment section when he said, hey... I'm just getting these Amico games. I'm getting this for the channel. You know, you don't think I'd actually get this stuff. I actually, you know, no, I'm getting this for the channel. It's for the channel. Honesty is very important on YouTube, but it's rare that we actually see it. How many of these channels actually got this stuff, bought these Amico games because they wanted to have it on their upload, and they thought, you know what? Maybe I'm going to make some ad revenue from actually just, you know, kind of, you know, buying this stuff and then crapping on it, you know, calling it greeting cards. Again, to a business aspect, if he didn't make as much in ad revenue from the cost of getting those items, those games, then that was a bad business decision, a bad business move. 